Hey there, Word Muggles. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Have you ever wanted to figure out what lucrative niche you should write in? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how I come upon a niche that is lucrative and start writing for them and determining if it's a good niche to write in. Okay, let's get into things. If you don't know me, my name is Peyton of Writing Income Accelerator, where I show freelance writers how to earn top dollar for their work. Go ahead and rate, subscribe, and send on the alerts for this episode. Um, let's get right into things. Okay, so uh, this kind of happened to me last week, but I set an appointment to talk to somebody. They flaked, okay? I gave my second chance. They flaked again, so I, I was kind of pissed. But I did a, it's, I'll turn a negative into a positive. I did a lot of research on their industry, and their industry is a fantastic one. It's at the very beginning. It's almost saturated, but it's at the very beginning of becoming like really great. I suspect in a year or two it will be super saturated because there are dozens, if not hundreds, of companies that already do this, if not thousands of companies that already do what they do. But the the niche is growing; it's worth several billion. So when I uh, here's the thing: a lot of freelance writers are kind of in their head about a niche or niche, however you want to say that. They uh, think they have to nail their niche right out of the gate, and that's it it's written in stone and they only write in those three niches and that's it and then they might find out that that's not a lucrative niche so i created this guide right here stay to the end i'll show you how to get this but this uh nail your niche in four steps even though it's the seven easy steps i'll change that i, I keep adding these steps but uh, i'm going to show you these four things that i go over to help you nail your niche there's this guide it, it it's like i think it's like 12 pages a free guide that you can get that I wrote and it shows you how to find lucrative niches because the worst thing you can do is be in a niche and it's not worth anything. So in this guide I have this exercise called a true north exercise and it basically helps you find your passion, your skill sets, your beliefs, your values and how those all mix and then I try to match that with industries that are lucrative. So where those two mesh, you know, what you want to write about and what you're good at with an actual market that exists, that is the perfect niche. Okay, that is the bending diagram where it all smushes together. A lot of people, they just kind of write about what they like and that, that, not, that might not be worth any money in that specific niche. So after you do this true north exercise, you kind of figure what niches you should be in. And by the way, I have a 42-day article challenge that helps you find these niches and build a portfolio, which is needed. Um... I'll give you that link in the description below. But after you do the True North exercise, you, you gotta find which niches are lucrative, okay? So this person came to me, they filled out my form online and they kind of told me about their niche and it is in the, the business app creator industry. And so what I did is I went to good old Google and I typed in, I wanted to see how big this niche is and then I can look at keywords to see if I can rank for them. Is the industry so big that it's saturated and the keywords are impossible to attain, right? But also, is this an industry worth being in because they're worth billions? Or is it not worth billions and I shouldn't be in it? So that's what I'm doing with this search. That is the point. So what I did is I Google, and you want to take this out of quotes, but business mobile app, and, and I put the word market in there. So niche plus the word market plus the word billions. Okay, hit return. And then you will find out certain things like this. You'll find that... 365 billion is one of the hits here. 497 billion is one of the hits. Now they're including the entire world of apps, not just business apps. So maybe the business app segment of it is only worth 70 billion still. If they have 1 billion, that's worth it for me. I want to be in that industry if I, I love what they're doing. So that's one really great way to check it out. And then, so when I do put it in quotes, business mobile app in quotes, plus market plus billions, I have this uh, hit return and I have this figure 581.9 billion in 2020 and 808.7 billion dollar market in 2022 which is next year. Wow. So th this is going to be a trillion dollar market in a few years. Yeah, that's what some of this is saying. And you can kind of scroll below to see at where they're at 107 billion. Okay. So there's money in this niche. I should definitely be writing in this industry. Okay, you can go to Statista and find similar statistics. They're not going to be detailed because you have to 
subscribe for this and it's very expensive ibis world does the same thing and they're only going to give you the the brief overview they're not going to give you the exact number sometimes but they will sometimes you'll say like this one right here so company smart app developers in the u.s industry 31 billion so a lot of companies in america so there are probably thousands of companies that create apps for businesses so what i then do is so number one is i, I got my true north i know what i like to write about and what i'm good at number two is i found a lucrative niche okay this business app niche so th from there i go to the i might google business app companies take out the quotes or what uh better yet is what an actual uh customer might type in so maybe you know, like no code business app builder there that that's good and then I, on it doesn't matter if you click on the ads or the first 10 results but you want to start looking at these companies saying okay so these companies that i look at and there, there could be a list of them somewhere as well they're my my future clients potential clients okay so i want to check them out so i'm going to size up this first one which is called biz bin business apps okay so what i'm looking at here is i'm going to see first of all i'm going to see if they have a pixel and if and i got to make sure my ad blockers are off and i have the facebook pixel helper and the reason why i'm doing this is if they never take out an ad that's fine so i'm looking for their google ad or their facebook pixel i, I only need the pixel so in my i have a chrome extension called facebook pixel helper and when the, ad, the website pops up it shows me if there are any pixels on an ad what a pixel does is it tracks that website and different actions taken on the website and it gets all this information about the demographics and psychographics and geographics and all this data okay so if a company especially a company that's offering an app like all commerce companies all companies that sell something online that have a website should have a pixel because if they don't they're throwing their money away because they're not getting really great free data and intelligence on the actual visitors to me it's just insane that every site this doesn't have a pixel okay that's trying to sell something online if they don't have a pixel they don't know what online marketing is about and so i yes i owe j2r i own j2r media and we do facebook ads but even if they never did an ad i'm just this is something i can bring into the conversation saying you're kind of you know leaving money on the table by not having this uh, this pixel but also you're missing out on some really important data you can find the exact age range of people that visit your site you can find locations all kinds of good stuff and so this is quick and easy it, it'll, it'll have a number on this icon where the app is fix or the um, extension is if there are any pixels so if they have three pixels it, it have a number three up there so i got nothing on this one so already i have some intelligence i can use in a call if i get into a call with them uh, so the uh, businessapps.com looks fantastic it's a great website they have a blog i'll check out the blog okay so they have the little share symbol it looks like it's you know great ui great graphics no comments and they got all their share icons zero 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 shares zero likes so their content doesn't do that good okay i'm gonna guess and maybe i, I need to look at several blog posts to see that but they have content which is fantastic and i can bring that into a conversation but I always talk about ROAS, return on article spin. Are their articles really getting the bang for the buck? Are they performing? Okay, we don't just want pretty words and pretty images. We want it to actually do something. And they don't even have a good call to action at the end. So you read the post and then nothing. So I might have a guide that you can download. And I would write that guide and I'd charge them a lot of money to write that guide. Um, so they don't have a good CTA. So already I can bring that into the conversation. I can say, oh, okay, that's that's interesting. Um, so uh, after I look at the content, you know, I might write down in a spreadsheet, like you know, follow up with these people, do some more research, see how much money they make, all that, see if they fit my parameters for an ideal client. So I go on to the next hit, the next um, app company, 
Appley, Appley, AppleyAppBuilder.com. So fantastic website, first of all. I really like it. And I'm seeing that they have content. It's listed below as in, as in the blog link. And uh, it is long. It does not do good in terms of interaction. One heart. So you can share it and all that, but there's no comments and little interaction with it. So they might need a little help there. I'll do an analysis on Hrefs or SEMrush to see how much traffic this gets and all that, but these guys could definitely use my help. No pixel and content. But they do have lots of content. They have like 10 articles here. I'm just not sure if it's performing well or if they have any pillar content. Because remember, I want to write the pillar content, the epic content. So let's move on to the next site, redfoundry.com. Fantastic website. They work for big brands. No pixel, so they're not getting this awesome data. And here's another thing about the pixel. I might spend 20 bucks on ads if I write an article for them to boost that article. I shouldn't use boost because that's not what you're doing. You're taking out a real ad on Facebook. But I might use the data insights from their pixel to show to the right people on Facebook, since Facebook has the biggest directory of people on the planet, and just show those people that fit the right criteria an ad to read this article. Okay, so I'm not seeing a pixel, so that's an opportunity lost right there on demographic intelligence. They have tons of posts, tons of categories. Their content does well, 75 hearts, 97 hearts. So. Yeah, they might not be lacking in the content thing. I just don't know. I'll look it up in Hrefs and do a site audit and see if they have some massive traffic coming in. But so far, these are kind of like, okay, I might follow up with these people. I might not. Uh, let's go to let's go to the next one. Oh, fantastic. Appypie.com. A-P-P-Y. PIE.com. Fantastic websites, trusted by 7 million businesses worldwide. So these people seem like they're the, the rainmakers. They have the pixel. Okay, they get the data. So that's awesome. Oh, so far, I like the site the best. They show you how to use the app in the actual industry. So, how to use a business app in real estate, how to use a business app in radio and music, how to use a business app in churches, and then in restaurants, and then in e commerce or M commerce. M commerce stands for mobile commerce which is what all this is so yeah three steps to get started yo this is awesome so far i like this site except for this giant chunk of information right here that's bad ui ux but anyhow so they've got a blog they're writing uh, awesome infographics yeah i don't think they're lacking in terms of content they they probably hire some people out maybe or do some in-house no comments, but they have some awesome con con content. I might still reach out to these people because they've got such a solid company and uh, see if they need pillar posts. Okay, so this next search result that came up is by Zoho, and they are a giant company, and then they have branded content. They have their own peer. This is how companies should do it. They have their own publication on their own site, and it's called Decode. So Zoho is a huge company, so they might be too big to connect with. It might have to go through several layers of contact, several people, several tries. They might do it all in-house, like you know, hiring a, a professional brand journal. So I'm not quite sure if they could even use my help. But the content does all right. Get some views set up perfectly. Maybe could use a few more images, but no comments no sh share no shares but uh, they only have one share button linked in no they don't even have share button so there, there's some things they're missing out here but the decoded the decode publication is not pixel so zoho.com is their publication isn't so they're kind of missing out on some really essential data and if i see if i don't see pillar posts maybe i can reach out to them and say hey you know long form will perform well in uh, SEO in, in Google. So you know, I write that maybe we can do some business. So Zoho probably not on my list, but some decent content. Um, so here we go. P a pixel content on it, pixel content. Audit. That's all I'm doing here. 
So, and also looking at the, the company is great if they have a great website and if they look like they're bringing us some money. So this is awesome. Operati, A P P R A T dot I O op, Oprat E <laughs> I O. Uh, build web apps for iOS without code. So twenty bucks a month. So super cheap and. Yeah, I like the, the layout of the site. It's fantastic. You know what it stands for. And I'm going to scroll to the bottom to see if they have some sort of blog. I don't see one. So already that's a, a thumbs up in my list. Like, you need content. How could you be this multi-million dollar company and not have content? Come on. And then I'll look at the Facebook Pixel. They do not have one. So their leading you know, data is lost. Uh... And I can give some insight on that. I like how they have video. So I would definitely put these people on a list and reach out to them. And then the last one is Adalo, A-D-A-L-O dot com. They have a pixel. Uh, they have this tab called Learn. So tutorials. Okay, this is fantastic. They have tutorials and they have a blog. So this co company, in theory, they're set up really great for content. Not sure how good the content actually is. But I'll click on something and, and find out for you. But yes, that, yeah, I'm loving this site. So far, this is one of my favorites. But remember, hundreds, if not thousands of companies do this. And so if this is your, your niche, blue ocean, blue ocean. Okay, so content's not very long. There's no social engagement because they don't have social buttons. There's no comments because they don't have the comment thing on. You can't make a comment. So, yeah, I'll, I'd still reach out to these people. They'd probably make enough money to, to pay someone like myself to do pro content for them. So, yeah. So, now I've got a list of five or six people. And I'll go on hunter.io to find the people who work for a company that are in the marketing department or somebody in a C-suite. And send them one of my famous pitch letters. And pitch them my idea. Or maybe do my cold loom tactic where I make a content audit. So... You know, I'd find out the right email, the right person to pitch through Hunter IO and several other things. I can use LinkedIn as well, find out the right people to connect with, and then pitch. And if I send out pitches, 10, 20 of them, maybe two or three of them will get back to me, and maybe one of them will book a call with me. So that's how it works in the beginning. It's a numbers game. If you don't have those hot leads that just come to you willingly, you have to do warm and cold outreach, but you'd only have to do that for a short amount of time. Then referral stuff comes in if you do awesome work. So don't freak out about cold emailing or cold calling anybody. It is a phase for the right kinds of good writers. So the phase that may only last three to six months. So I've already got my list together. So I've done my lead sourcing. I've got a list of people to connect with. I've done some premature audits. And I know the niche has billions of dollars to work with. I know there are thousands of companies in the industry. I've looked at individual websites and I know they need my help. And when I get on the phone with them, I'm just going to say, listen, you know, we all know that there's two ways to get traffic. Paid traffic, which costs a lot of money, and organic content, which is search. Most of the time, 89% of the time, when people want, try to find a product, is through search, organic search. The problem with paid is that as soon as you stop paying Facebook the thousands of dollars a month, the clicks stop. The beauty of... Uh, long form content that ranks in Google is that every content gets better with age. And so ideally you should have both 80, 20, who knows what's 80 and which ones is a 20, but you should do paid content and organic. And technically you pay for the organic content because you're paying me, but you should have articles and you should have ads. Okay. And if you see a company that is deficient in either of those, you know that that's a good client for you. Cause now I'm just talking facts. The best companies that get the most traffic, that make the most money, do of both of these things. They have paid traffic. They have organic traffic. Yes, they have other things like word of mouth and all that. But on the surface, on the web, they're either paying for their traffic or getting organic traffic through search. And so what I specialize in is evergreen content that, that ranks page one of Google. And I'm going to try to get it certain keyword phrases that their ideal customer is Googling and get them on that page one. Read an awesome article that's outstanding and uh, or helps them out a lot or an interesting narrative or something. And then at the bottom, a call to action to lead them to their site or a landing page opt-in. We're trying to collect emails here. 
So that's the system, that's what I use, and the sky is the limit. This is one niche, okay? There are tens of thousands of other niches. And people, and again, people are kind of freaking out that they have to settle on a niche soon or they're just not finding you. Well, whatever your hobby is, whatever you have a master's degree or bachelor's degree in, whatever you studied, whatever you have five, 10 years experience in that you're an expert in, awesome hobby, there is a business connected to that, okay? If you like phones, mobile phones, if you like apps, and you like business, why aren't you in this industry making money? Because those three things together, that that's the, Venn, the beautiful Venn diagram of a perfect fit. And then you see these companies that definitely need your help. And you're having a consultative sales conversation with them at the end of a discovery call, meaning it's not hard sales. You're just spitting out the facts. You're just saying, listen, I went to your site. I checked it out. Here's your free HRF audit on your website. Here are some opportunities with content. We're going to play ball. You know, do, you, do you want to take advantage of this? Uh, I might do a competitor analysis. HRF has this awesome thing called a content gap. And if you put in your client or your prospective client's URL and then four of the biggest competitors, and it finds the content gap, it finds keywords that you can rank for that other people are ranking for but you can still attain and beat them out and rank for those keywords okay so you're kind of using the competition's information to find the right keywords and you can share that information with them saying hey here are some other opportunities you know i see a five to ten article project here which would be fantastic or one big pillar coast or pillar post i recommend a pillar post a quarter so four giant epic hub posts a year and you backlink them to the smaller sp spoke posts whether that's on medium or your own blog it doesn't matter so massive opportunity i talked about the 413 billion dollar contact market industry this is the right industry to be in if you're a freelance writer if you're dedicated to learn the skill set if you're dedicated to write if you're dedicated to pitching and selling and getting out there and connecting with real people and delivering awesome results this is a fantastic way to make money it won't happen overnight it does take work but i have shown you the facts of the numbers and google shows you and tells you how to rank articles sort of gives you an idea like we want quality content long content keywords here and there like it tells you gives you indicators of what works professional seos will tell you the exact things <laughs> how to make an article rank but I'm telling you, businesses, this is what they do. If 100% of their business is not referral, they're doing some form of advertising. And that advertising is either paid or organic. Okay, You can be on the organic side and really help them make a, a lot of real connections with people. That's the other thing with organic content is that an ad is just shamelessly trying to sell something to somebody. Okay, When you write long form content like an ultimate guide or a brand journalism piece, you're spending time to genuinely connect with somebody, edutainment style. And that's a better relationship. That's higher quality. That's an MQL, higher quality marketing lead than just this ad where you're trying to like give a special price or, or something or send somebody a case study they'll never read. Like that's great and it definitely works, but there should be a marketing mix here. And long form content is a fantastic industry to be in right now. And now I've just showed you very quickly how to find niches and there's hundreds and thousands of them out there so don't get hung up on finding the right niche okay write voluminously write you know you know make sure the writing part that you do is the easiest thing that you do like you have that habit down and you can write well you built up a portfolio a case study uh, if you don't have any case studies yet, if you don't have two to three case studies where you got clients ranked to page one and other metrics that's important to them you can do some of these articles pro bono okay you can find your niche reach out a few of these companies get them awesome results track it on bitly and use that as a case study and then charge people a lot of money for <laughs> an article but the opportunities is here and i hope you see it i hope you see the facts okay so if you like this let me know my name is peyton of writing income accelerator.com where i show freelance writers how to get paid top dollar for their work go to this site and get your free nail your niche in seven steps not four seven steps guide 
It's 18 page guy. Oh, 18 page guy that helps you choose the best three niches for you. Choose the most profitable niches and plan for a remarkable freelance portfolio. It is writing income accelerator.com forward slash niches hyphen and hyphen portfolio hyphen guide. I'll just put the link in the description. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.